me or something, yeah. and the word sped around town in 20 minutes yeah. that we were out of the sale, which meant that yeah. Carter Brown thought he had a clear road. Yeah. Then we did something, I think, which was terribly clever since <laughs> I invented it. <laughs> yes, you did. I let the word out. Maybe we should buy this expensive painting together with another museum in order to take the heat off. Yeah. It was around the time of the bankruptcy of the city of New York, so, you know. So I asked various institutions where they'd go half and half, and they were interested, but they didn't have the cash. And what Paul Mellon, who was the nabob of the National Gallery, yeah. told my chairman, Douglas Dillon, pointed out that they were in the sale without any question. So we knew who the underbidder was. And when you know who the underbidder is, it makes it kind of easy. So you got now, it. if somebody had said, let's say, Charlie, out in San Francisco, yeah, we'll buy it together with you, we would have been delighted to share it four years, four years, four years, because we believed that. Yeah. Why not? Talk about authenticity of these kinds of paintings. I mean, you've written about that before in other books, uh, and fake art. And how do you determine authenticity? Uh, one of the things, and this does not go to the heart of authenticity, that you take pride on is your eye. I mean, it is the sense of... of Hoban has a great eye for art, but talk about authenticity. Well, you know that something's real or fake simply by having saturated yourself with everything. If you're going to buy this piece of right. uh, blue paper. paper, you will have seen 10,000 other blue papers by the same artist or by his school or by Faker. So when the fake one comes in the door 20 feet away, I say, oh, there's uh, by Faker Joe. You can also tell how things have been repainted, and they can be seamless. They can take ancient canvas, scrape off some of the stuff, recreate something, take a school piece and make it into the master. Yeah. And look, if a month's work like that is going to make you $8 million, the incentive is there. So fakes are all over the place. And uh, what we simply did was to work like the devil and keep our ears to the yeah. ground about what the fakers were doing. Do you have any serious questions about anything you bought? Fake? Yes. Oh, yeah, I bought several fakes. Yeah, but which ones w w was the biggest boomer for you? Luckily, I was only around the $75,000 range. Okay. Didn't do $2 million fakes in the, you know, one after another. When you do that, you park cars in your own garage, and that's it. But a, 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 a collector, whether a private person or a museum, that has never collected a forgery has not been doing the right job. No <laughs> guts. No, no guts. guts. You're not willing to take a chance. You've got to reach for it. Let's say a dealer with the same blue piece of paper. You come mm. in Paris, you see this marvelous painting in the back of the shop, and you say, hey. And he said, well, you've got to make up your mind in five minutes because the National Gallery of Art in Washington <laughs> wants that painting. And yeah. Cleveland wants it, and you know everybody wants it. Make up yeah. your mind. So you give it your best shot. You buy it, and then ooh, yeah. all of the scientific tests will tell you nothing. It's what's, the heart and the gut. What's better for a great curator? Um, a superb scholarly instinct and background and credentials in the world of art, such as an art historian, or a great love of art and a showman's impresario's instinct for being able to create uh, attention to it. You got to have the gut, you got to have the showmanship, the book learning can come at the same time or, or can afterwards. can you get other people to give it to you? Can you, you can't, hire? You can't really the hire. The curator has to have it. curator has to have that passion. Yeah. A curator also ought to have an independent income because <laughs> the field doesn't pay very well. Yeah. How bad did you want to be uh, head of the Getty? Never wanted to be. You never, never. wanted to be. No. You know that's part of your legend. I mean, that, yeah, but and was, they think not only that, that you have, that, that you're obsessed by the Getty, that you well, write I, about it, you criticize right. it constantly. Well, I 